Hello everybody and welcome back to the damn sofa. That's the sofa and that's the Mr. Roscoe P. Cool train back there. My size is the little sidekick and my name is Paul. I hope you all are doing well, my sofa squad. Now you saw the thumbnail. Yes, we are revisiting this nightmare. Why are we revisiting it? Because I never talked about the rap, cur rap career, right? Literally so many of you asked me to talk about this. I got busy with work, life happened, other cases, all this. So I wanted to revisit this because I finally took the time to sit down and look at it. And I was, y'all, I was like this watching it. I was like, you cannot, you cannot with this, right? Um, so here's what we're going to do. First of all, there's also a couple of clips I want to look at of the hearings that took place after he was sentenced in the, you know, the case of the, um, uh, the Waukesha the parade case that we watched. Uh, just because I think his behavior is so vastly kind of different. Uh, maybe humbled, if you will, if that could be possible for him. But what we'll do is we'll look at that and make some commentary, and then we're going to also look, like I said, at the rap, at his rap stuff. So... Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, before we do, thank you to everybody who makes this Sofa Squad possible. Y'all, it's not possible without y'all. I really appreciate it. The Patreons, the members, everybody who likes, shares, comments, the videos. And also, y'all, let's go ahead and make some room on the sofa. We have a new friend, a new sponsor. I'm super excited about them. So take a moment and hear what I have to say about them. This Valentine's Day, think outside the box and wow your special someone with Exter. Exter's known for inventing the first trackable wallet, and now they're on a mission to upgrade all your carry essentials. This is the collection of wallets that Exter sent me to try out, and I've been reviewing one each month. So let's take a look and see what Exter's all about. They're super slim, but they can still carry over 12 cards and cash. You can even track your wallet's location. And then there's the quick card access with a click of a button using Exter's signature trigger mechanism. There's also the built-in RFID blocking that protects you from data theft and wireless skimming. If you follow me, then you'll know that I teamed up with Exter last month to try out several of their wallets. Last month, I tried out this one, the aluminum. I reviewed it. It was amazing. Obviously, I've been using it every day. I absolutely fell in love with it at first sight, and it's been an everlasting love. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the one that I upgraded to this month. Now, another thing that I love about Exter is their packaging and presentation. The paper, the box that it comes in is very luxe feeling. It feels like a very high graded paper and it slides out like this. It's very presentation oriented and it's very luxe feeling. But with Exter, that feeling of lux and presentation and quality doesn't just stop at the box and the presentation. Let's talk about what's inside. This style is called the Carbon Fiber Card Holder. It features 3K space carbon fiber, expandable aluminum backplate, it holds up to 15 cards plus cash, and it blocks RFID wireless theft. Now, let's talk about that tracker card. So it has a wallet and phone ringing feature, worldwide lost and found network, three hours of solar charge that lasts two full months, and voice activated using Siri, Alexa, or Google. So Extra offers these things where you can put your air tags in here if you do like an Apple type situation. I don't have an Apple phone, so I have an Android and I end up just using the regular little band that goes in here. And the tracker, you just put in the thing. This is how I do it at least. Now, you might be asking, how does this work? What to do? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, so pretend you're trying to run out of the house. Where's my fancy new wallet I got? I can't find it. Well, you just go to the app that you downloaded on your phone and you press ring to find and then... There's your wallet. I love it. Now let's pretend that it's like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to run out of the house. I have my fancy new wallet, but where is my phone? Well, they've got you covered too. You just take your little track route and your little thing right here. Boom, boom. There's the phone. I absolutely love this. It is amazing. So look, go ahead, give it a try. Whether you're treating your special someone or treating yourself, you can get up to 35% off by using code SOFA up until February 14th. That is 35% off using code SOFA up until February 14th. So give it a shot. So be sure to check out the description below. It has all the links to all that down there. You'll find it. Now let's go ahead and get to dish in on Daryl. Not sure what this court date is about, but as you can see, I'm not allowed to have any legal paperwork at this time. I was placed on the protocol. To, I watch protocol for without even being suicidal. 
um, still would like the rendering of the accounts in this matter, if I may. Mr. Brooks, the court set this because you had filed uh, one of one document uh, on the 15th that I construed as a motion for a stay pending appeal. First of all, you know they're going to have him up in there in that damn turtle outfit. <laughs> you already know, right? They should have had him up there in that before, but I get it, right? Now, he's up in there talking about, well, I'm not even, you know, S. I can't say the word because I'll probably do something to the video. You know, da 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 Well, of course, that's what they're going to do for something like this. I mean, my God. Then also, like, I don't even know what this is about. And she's like, well, you filed a motion, idiot. Like, this is why you're here. And she's like, notice her, like, little low-key not jab, but I mean, she's being legit, but she's like, I construed this to be this. Knowing he probably scribbled something on some damn toilet paper and sent it in. And now here he is looking like this in his turtle suit, Lizky watching. And you may or may not recall, but when the state asked me to consider that at the conclusion of Wednesday's hearing, uh, I indicated I would wait until all of the judgment of convictions had been signed and then schedule a hearing. I have signed the judgments of conviction and uh, because of some of the procedural, if you wanna call it that, things that have happened. I know you were taken to Milwaukee for uh, what was supposed to be a jury status hearing on two matters. Um, I thought perhaps they would keep you there, but it's my understanding all of those dates were adjourned uh, and so you were brought back to the Waukesha County Jail. Um, and so since you were going to be here, I thought I would schedule this for that motion hearing uh, in order to address that. Now, interesting, she explains herself here very eloquently and all this type of stuff. Basically, she's like, they don't want him there. They sent him back. Can you imagine the nightmare this man is? The absolute nightmare behind bars he is for the officers and people like this, right? Uh, so let's keep watching. I believe we gave you a copy of all of, you gave us three inmate communication forms together. Do you remember that on the 15th? Uh, I don't recall giving any uh, ICFs. I recall um, submitting the, the notice of right to appeal. Okay, so pay attention to this. You know, there's this whole thing with the paperwork and we'll learn, you know, because obviously he's up in that turtle suit and, you know, on You Know What Watch, they're not going to let him have access to certain things. But she said, so you gave us three ICFs. You know, do you remember that? Well, I don't recall this, but I remember the, the state of appeal, you know, so keep that in mind. And that one was dated the 13th. Another that said the 4th, but I believe it was from the 14th, um, talking about waiving costs and fees. Oh, I recall. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, re I recall that that was uh, the week before last when I submitted that that one that you just referred to. Okay. Mm -hmm. He remembers waving the cost and fees. He perked right up over that, right? He wants to get that commentary money, right? I mean, that's all that comes down to because she messed him up real good, as she should, right? So again, just with him sitting here, oh, I remember the one about money. I remember that one, you know police now let's jump to that other the status hearing the milwaukee thing that he did let's just let the evidence speak for itself okay Dutch, what are you drinking for a date yeah. i mean depending on I just I, I, we'll see what i was looking to do um so i i, I hadn't really thought that far in advance This is State of Wisconsin versus Darrell Brooks Jr. Case 20 CF 2550, also calling 21 CF 4596 and 21 CF 5020. Now look, they weren't playing, okay? They wheeled him out there, strapped and locked down into that thing. Now, if you notice when he's like trying to look at who I'm assuming is his lawyer or whatever, and like, just this is just, I don't know this for fact or whatever, this is me just basing this off of what I've seen his behavior. To me, he looks pissed, right? Daryl does. Um, 
talking to a lawyer real quick or whatever. And so that's where I'm just like, oh, I bet, I, again, God knows what they go through to get him to court in the mornings. So, the, and again, half the time it's like, this is probably how it should have been in the other one, but again, I get they can't do that. Uh, let's keep watching. Um, at this point, should we be looking at setting new final, trial and final pretrial dates, or do you think the cases are going to move in a different direction? Um, at this point, I guess we as do we uh, set a status date so that uh, we can figure out how we want to move forward and also discuss any possible plans, any possible options with the state if those exist. Mr. Corum, Ms. Grasso, do you want to weigh in on that? I don't have a position on that question. <laughs> All right. Um, From the court's perspective, that's appropriate um, because I, I think clearly if we end up setting another trial date for Mr. Brooks, that has to be the in capital letters trial date for these matters. And it's gonna take a, a fair amount of preparation on behalf of the state, a fair amount of preparation on behalf of the defense and a fair amount of preparation on behalf of the court system. And so now one thing I think is interesting with this, and again, we don't know what happened beforehand, whatever, but you have a male judge here. Now we've seen how he treats the women in his life, right? So I was always curious, how would he have shown out in the trial that we watched, the parade trial, if the judge had been male, right? Would he have come at the judge differently or whatever? Now, again, this is hard to tell here so far because clearly he's strapped down. He's got the mask on. Now, we also know that from watching before that Daryl was going to always wear a mask. That's what he wanted to do. But you see, nobody else is really wearing a mask in here. So it almost makes me wonder, is that Daryl wanting to do that? Or is this like a spit guard thing or whatever? I think it's Daryl wanting to do it. Again, we would get a better temperature for how he would be if this goes to trial all that type of stuff and say he has someone else represent him or if he represents himself or whatever the case may be and it's a male judge just to see like well how does he how does that play out in the courtroom with his behavior now let's look at this very quick clip from uh that documentary that he was in uh about the math or something like that and let's just watch it and then i've got a few things to say on that too so a roll tape i wasn't a human anymore i was just something something vile, disgusting, despicable. I could go, I could go on, I could use a lot of words, but that's, that's what I became. You can say that again. I mean, my God, that's probably the most truthful thing that came out of his mouth, but also very, first of all, can we just say, how does he end up in all this stuff, right? I'm just like, how, I mean, the rap videos we're about to watch, this crystal darkness documentary, I'm just like, how does he end up in this stuff? You know, and he's talking about being tweaked out, whatever. Now, I'll say this. It makes me very much wonder if that's what was going on the night of the uh, crime because people who saw him were like, you know, the, the, his face and stuff like that were talking about this like you know, look on his face while he was doing this. Now, again, from what we've seen of his behavior, I mean, he could just be a, a absolutely, you know, off his rocker. I mean, clearly he is on some level. So he might not have needed to, he could be sober and have done what he did is what I'm trying to get at, right? But I just find it so interesting how it's like this bizarre personality who did something, one of the most heinous things that I've seen in a while. Y'all, we see a lot of heinous stuff here at the sofa, right? Uh, watching these cases. You know, but then it's like, it turns out, oh, he's a rapper. Oh, he's in this documentary. Oh, he's, and I'm like, you know, I mean, my God, what else are we going to uncover about this dude? Now, speaking of uncovering, let's watch some clips from the rap video, the first one that was in the court case. What we're going to do first is we're going to listen to him trying to argue for it not to be shown. Y'all, as soon as we look at some clips, you're going to know why he doesn't want it shown. Now, I for this one, and for both of them, really, I'm going to do it with the volume off. Now, the one that we're going to watch... Um, they didn't play it in court, like the audio to it. It was just visual, but that's all you needed because the things I want to talk about, I'm just like, you cannot with this guy. So let's listen to a few clips of what he's trying to argue and him back talking about even having to play it, you know, for the jury. And the statement. So continue. this exhibit shouldn't be evidence then because Mr. it didn't Brooks, exist before today. The objection noted. It's overruled. Go ahead. This, there was a still photo shown before of Mr. Brooks standing in front of the four escape. 
This is the video in which that still photo was taken from. Now you heard the little detective up there. The irony of this is that for someone who is like talking about what parade, what are you talking about? Bah, 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 bah. He did a rap video with what I would call the murder weapon trying to flaunt his mother's car. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I, you can't make this stuff up, so let's just keep watching. And, uh, I, I object to that, and I would like to make an offer of proof for my appeal. We'll do that outside the presence of the no. jury, but I will allow the state to play it in its entirety without audio. Your Honor, I have all the exhibits they were provided. Mr. Brooks, I'll take that up. Along with the other two issues, I still need to but address. How, but how can you play something that's not that I didn't? Mr. Even Brooks, have? I'll take that up. All right, so now let's just go ahead and take a look at some clips from this video that he's so adamant about not being able to admit into evidence. I question him about, about, I question him about the steel frame from the video. The video wasn't even in, in the exhibits that I received. Okay, now hold on just one second. Let's rewind to this little clip of the, uh, the, the money bags hanging from his mouth. Okay, now, t t first of all, I'm surprised it wasn't a $20 bill. <laughs> you know he had to ask to borrow this. <laughs> Here's my thing, okay, it, you know, and I'm not trying to make fun of, like, the, the monetary thing, whatever, but, like, for what he's trying to give, I'm just like, you got $100 bill hanging out of your mouth. Just knowing he borrowed it from his mama, <laughs> from Erica, from somebody, right? <laughs> you know it's not his money, okay? <laughs> There's that. Okay, so let's just start there. Let's keep going. They actually didn't even receive Mr. it. Mr. Brooks, please stop. The jury will disregard his statements. He's not testifying. The now let's just pause in this other still frame here. Here we see the car behind Mr. Brooks. Now again, let's just look at the irony of this. This is the car, his mama's car, first of all, that he took, mowed down people. It's in his rap video that was on his social media. Now again, I'm sitting here trying to figure out why are you trying to flaunt this car in this rap video? Like why? It doesn't even make sense. Okay, let's keep going. Now again, as we see more footage of the car, the gun, the whole nine yards, and I'm like, he's, he's, he's trying to play off like he's the victim here in this court case, and then they're going to show this video. I mean, it, did, it didn't help his case, okay? So play the sound, I want to hear it now. Now let's look at this still frame from this next clip. Here he's pointing at the vehicle. He wants everyone to be aware of it. It's like a case. It's like any kind of crime that I'm gonna commit, please take note of the color of the emblem of everything I'm pointing to it. Here we go. Again, I don't know why, like why is he here? Why is he in this alley? Why is he flaunting this car there? I, I don't get it. Again, cannot stay away from having that car in the video. It's like the video, the song is about the damn car, okay? Now you hear him in the background trying to do a damn promo in the courtroom for it. Y'all, Now y'all know R. Kelly released that damn album from prison. I almost want to put damn money on it. If y'all want to talk about somebody who will end up doing a release from prison, mark my damn words, y'all it's going to be Daryl damn Brooks if he makes it that long, okay? Now, I just want to talk about this next snapshot. So, some of the faces that he gets in here, I'm going to have a hard time picking out what damn uh, thumbnail I want to do. There's so many good ones. I mean, my God. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Now, here's my thing also. You know he feels like he is shining in that courtroom right now. He is loving every second of this. This is his damn debut. This is the most traction his records were ever going to get. Okay, so now let's look at another one of his videos. Uh, just some clips from this, some imagery from this one, and uh, 
let's talk about it. Now the song is What's the Business, What's the Bidness, uh, or uh, something of that nature, and uh, that's the hook, the main hook or whatever. So I'm going to play a very quick clip because I don't know how this will go with copyright stuff or whatever, uh, and then we'll just look at some imagery from it. Okay, so you get the idea. That's the hook. That's basically the entire song. So let's continue. Okay, now in that clip we see he's going for the little bit of an apartment, a little bit of a, uh, you know, what do you call those jackets that you wear in school? A letter jacket look, a little vibe. Uh, and then a Vegas kind of vibe, I'm assuming that's Vegas in the background. But let's look at that clip real quick. I'm trying to decide if he's standing, if he's really where he says he's at. I mean, not where he says he's at, but like, is this a, a, a TV behind him? Is it a green screen? Like, I can't tell if that's real or not, but the outfit, it's not giving what he's wanting to serve, okay? And then he's on the phone. I mean, I'm just like, dude. Now again, here he's gonna be counting out some 20s. Yeah, you know, probably got those in about three afterpay payments, fake money. He's going to set his little Motorola down. He's very big into the phone here. Very big into the phone. You know. Okay, so it does appear that he really is at this Vegas place, right? I don't know why he's using the phone as a prop, but he the whole thing with the fedora in front of the Vegas thing or whatever that is where he's at, is it's so... I shouldn't even say that. This whole thing is cringy, y'all. This whole thing is cringy. Again, I don't understand why he does all these cuts to the phone. He is obsessed with the phone in these videos here. And again, the whole entire video takes place in the kitchen of the apartment and then on the Vegas Strip, you know, and I'm sure this has some kind of meaning to it. But what I see from all these rap videos that he's done, all this type of stuff, is again, it's almost like somebody who somebody who's so full of themselves, right? Like probably didn't take any kind of creative direction from anybody else, that type thing. Just like a level of cringe that is next level, right? Because there's some of this where I'm like, you cannot tell me somebody didn't try and tell him different, right? You know what I'm saying? That was like, dude, maybe like, let's do it this way. But again, he is a star in his own mind. And that's the best way to say it. He's a star in his own mind. Okay. You can't tell this man different. I mean, look at what he did. And then look at the show he put on during this court case of the horrible events that he caused. Right now, I want to talk about a quick update with him uh, real quick. So let's look at that. So as you see the title here, Waukesha Christmas Parade Attacker Daryl Brooks Gets Appealing Counsel. And then it just goes on to say that, you know, online court records reveal Friday 26th that he does have an appealing counsel. Uh, the guy's name, the attorney, is Michael Covey. Uh, he's gathering discovery materials for from the trial that we all witnessed. And it also says in late November he filed his notice of intent to seek post-conviction relief. And it was a handwritten notice. And I'm just going to put the picture of it up here because it's just it's very it's very daryl it's very very daryl so as you can see here it's very daryl he's handwritten this out and i would say he's done a pretty good job here uh you can pause it to read it's kind of hard to read over but you know he's listening to all his stuff here why he thinks you know, he needs this why he needs that now the article does continue to say go on to like talking about different types of post-relief conviction you know and how that this could go to different supreme courts and all that type of stuff y'all sadly we're not this is not the last we will see of daryl number one he has the other court cases going on but you know he's going to drag this out and take it to every single court you already see how he did with this right this man has nothing else to do the only thing that will stop him is if he doesn't make it in prison and i'm going to be shocked if he does now we will be staying tuned through it all to keep you all updated so be sure to check that out and also be sure to check out the video that is coming up right now